In an ever-advancing world, Attleboro High School is keeping pace. It's changing, too. Attleboro's strong community ties, however, remain the same. 100 Rathman Willard Drive was not the first iteration of AHS. The building has evolved and expanded along with our Blue Pride community. In 1867, Attleboro voted to establish its first public high schools, one in East Attleboro and one in North Attleboro. The East High School opened later that year with just 20 students enrolled. In 1892, a new building was built on Bank and Peck Streets for $15,000 enrolling 34 students in its first year. Just 11 years later, in April 1914, students moved to a brand new modern building on County Street. The late 1950s saw a need for more space and plans for a newer, bigger high school were drafted. The sprawling structure was built abutting Capron Park at 100 Rathman Willard Drive and opened its doors to about a thousand students in September of 1962. The $3.5 million high school boasted many amenities, including state-of-the-art classrooms, a 1,200 person auditorium, and a gymnasium that accommodated over 1,500 spectators. In 1973, the building was expanded, becoming a comprehensive high school designed for diverse educational experiences, including expanded vocational programs, new science labs, lecture rooms, and more. While this building no longer suits the needs of the students and faculty in the 21st century, it has played a part in many family legacies here in Attleboro and has continuously welcomed back alumni as teachers. I was a member of my class council and student council for all four years. Um, I swam and ran track for AHS a winter and spring track and I was one of I think there was about maybe 25 girls that started the girls soccer program here at Attleboro High School my junior and senior year. When I was a student here I was the editor of the school newspaper that we used to have and I also was one of the founding members of an after-school club uh, called the Newcomers Club that taught English to English language learners. I started at AHS as an eighth grader because I took algebra as a seventh grader. So in order to move on to geometry, they brought um, a select few of us from each school to the high school. So then I was here for uh, my four years of high school and I graduated in 05. And then I returned in 2014 and I teach chemistry here. And I've been teaching. Wow, I, well, I was a student of the 90s, right? So I always sort of consider the fact that I had a foot in both worlds, I had this, you know, pre-digital world where computers weren't a thing, you know, and then came into the world when I was in college. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you graduate, you're not really sure what you're gonna do, you start a degree, and just somehow along the way, I gravitated to teaching. Like, and I discovered that my third year, talking to my sister, she's a, a teacher as well. But it's a wonderful school to work for, and it was a wonderful school to go to. So as a student athlete here at Attleboro High School in 1986 through 1990, where I graduated, um, went off to college, uh, came back and was a physical education teacher at Koala Middle School. And then I came back to the high school as a dean of students soon after that. And um, now I'm currently the athletic director here at Attleboro High School. So combination of the last 28 years. Um, I've also served as coach for football um, and also um, I've been the head varsity basketball coach for the last 28 years. I arrived here in the uh, August of 1991, and I was here for four years. Uh, it was a really nice time. I, I um, had a lot of really great friends. Some people I'm still uh, very friendly with, and some people are still my best friends. So I met lifelong friends when I was here at uh, Adler High School. My whole family went to school here. My dad and my aunts and uncles went to school here. My grandmother worked here. Um, my grandfather was a fireman in Attleboro, so very often, you know, came to the school for fire drills and things like that. Um, my great uncle was the mayor of Attleboro, and so while he was mayor, um, most of my aunts and uncles and cousins um, on my dad's side were in school here. So um, it meant a lot to me to come back and kind of, um, you know, 
go to school here but also come back and teach here um, in a school where so much of my family went. You know, all of my family members are were part of the athletic family here at Attleboro High School as well, whether it would be football, basketball, or baseball. Uh, my father was a graduate in 1969. My older brother, Tommy, came here. He graduated in 1988. Uh, myself and then uh, my younger brother, Stephen, graduated in 1993. My wife, Kristen, um, graduate of 1991 here at Attleboro High School, where she played three sports as well. I have a junior, Mason, now that URI, who graduated uh, Attleboro High School in 2019. Um, I have a senior this year, Evan Hull, and I have an incoming eighth grader, Connor. Now he's had the opportunity to be in, in this school, and in, in, I would say the old school, but now he's going to have the opportunity to be in the new school as a student. So he's very excited about that. The uh, Blue Pride runs deep in the, in the Hull family. You know, my parents have gone here, my sister went here, my aunt graduated from here. Everything that, that was sort of part of that social experience in high school that she knew of in the early 80s had, was exactly my experience in the mid to late 90s, um, for the good or the bad. Despite the aging infrastructures, this school has developed character that transcends time, thanks to the students and staff who have made it their home throughout the years, some literally leaving their fingerprints along the way. The auditorium has hosted countless productions, assemblies, and opening day staff convocations. Its seats worn thin by students and community members. The air filled with voices of student actors, chorus members, and inspirational administrative speeches. The chorus room decorated with names, messages, and graduation years. The art room, a colorful display of student artists past and present, spilling out into the hallway for all to admire. The CTE shops, where so many passionate students have imagined, designed, built and created to better both the school and community. The greenhouse, which was once bustling with students and greenery, sits empty as it prepares for its new home and in the courtyard, the koi pond awaits its final visitors. Well, the B2 wall, which does not exist, was a, a big piece when we were growing up. Um, you know, in the beginning of school, you didn't hang out in the pit. Um, you could go up to the cafeterias and kids would just sit on the wall. There used to be lockers in B2 and that's, you know, where some of us had our stuff. I think the big one was, you know, was used to talk about B2 cafeteria when they had this wall and everyone would, that would be kind of the, be the place to go in between classes. Um, you'd sit on the wall and administration would come by and say, okay, the bell's gonna ring in 30 seconds and everyone would wait as, as long as they could before they could get to class because they knew it, how long it took them. Um, but um, the wall was a big, a big, I guess, an area that people kind of remember, you know what I mean? And, um, <laughs> I remember when we took the wall down because when we were a dean of students, we get to the point where, you know, kids really were just, they were just on the, they were hanging out and they just wouldn't go to class. So we're like, we eliminated the wall, which was at the time was probably the right thing to do. Um, but you think back and uh, the memories that we had hanging out on that was kind of fun, so. Uh. And this lab, other places don't have labs like this. They have them in their rooms. This has always been such an amazing space to learn in and do, do labs and activities and just be able to move around differently. It's this periodic table. So this has been here since way before I came to school here, but it's like, it's, it's its own memory. Like it's just here and everyone would look at it. And I think it's really cool. And I love that it was drawn in 1990 and now we're in 2022. And well, the periodic table has been updated since then. So while that ends at 109, we end at 118 now. So it's just cool that they took the time to hand do this. One thing that I still remember to this day is the way I would sometimes just walk down the hall, you know, just mindlessly, you know, put my fingers out and, and drag them across the um, cinder blocks. I still remember, you know, the feeling of the paint, the thick layers of paint over the cinder blocks, and I still remember the texture of those blocks and the spacing between each of the blocks. You know, just walking down the hall, I still remember that even to this day. Um, that's one of the things that, you know, I remember about the high school a lot. You know, it's just, you know, personal to me that nobody would probably ever, you know, know anything about unless I said anything about it. 
couple of Saturdays working where we had to come in to work on the newspaper, you know, and uh, the certain areas were locked and, um, you know, the library was locked, but in our youth, we were able to hoist ourselves up over the wall and use the phone. And, you know, in hindsight, we were like, yeah, we definitely like, shouldn't have been in that area. We weren't doing anything wrong, but it was like those moments where we were thinking, God, we used to get like McDonald's, I'll sit there, eat a bunch of like chicken nuggets together and like jump over the wall to use the phone and then jump back over and, you know, not a care in the world. I mean, just having eight lane pools, like other places don't have that big of a space. Even when you go to the Y, it's like four lanes, but an eight lane pool is something special. Of course, who could forget the legendary pit, the epicenter of Attleboro High School? Six decades of students having congregated there and passed through daily, gathering for ceremonies, dances, and the occasional shenanigans, the pit has seen it all. As a student, the place that kind of meant the most to me was the pit because it's where everybody would come in in the morning and wait to go to class. So yeah, the pit. I have a couple of memories of the pit. So one of them is my freshman year. Uh, this is where our uh, freshman gathering was. That was just kind of the congregating place. It was the congregating place in the morning. It was the congregating place in the afternoon. Um, and I don't think we even saw it as that. We just, it was a place where we went, but in hindsight, you're like, everyone knows the pit, but most people don't have a clue why it's called the pit, but that vernacular is part of the identity of the building. Well, I remember learning what the, why the pit was called the pit, and I just thought that was scandalous. The pit was actually a pit. And if you look at the uh, tiles in the pit, you'll see that it actually almost forms a square. It's not quite a square, but it's, you know, it, you can see where there are bumps because there was about two or three steps that would go down where people could then sit. So the pit was actually a depressed area. It was like it went down, you know, several feet and that eventually got filled in. And so now it's just a flat surface in the pit area. Um, but it, there was a couple of reasons that it got filled in is that sometimes it became a boxing ring where people would gather around on the, the couple of stairs and they would, uh, you know, the people would just duke it out. And that was, you know, back in the 1980s. There will come a time when the pit and the rest of the building will be gone, but the memories made here decade after decade will keep the lore of this labyrinth alive for future generations. I'm 47 years old. I've been going to Attleboro High School since I was five years old. Attleboro High School has been home. Um, when I was a kid, um, Attleboro High School had summer school, but it wasn't traditional summer school. I mean, it was summer school. You came, there were art classes, drawing, pottery, gym classes. You could do gymnastics, swim lessons. Um, I had a reading disability as a child, so I was here from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. And my sister is seven years older than I was, and so she was in the marching band, she was in field hockey, she was in drama. She was my second mom, so I was the little tag along, and I spent all my summers hiding under, which is no longer the old bleaches at AHS, you know, drawing in the sand while she spent hours out on the turf or actually grass field back then, uh, practicing for the marching band, and then all endless hours in the auditorium when they were, you know, doing drama for Greece. Oh, being on the bus, like our sophomore year, being on the bus with Coach Honey, who is now Miss Sawyer, uh, just having some fun times laughing, a bunch of us with her. Uh, the place was packed, it was very loud. Um, you know, I remember at that basket right over there, uh, hitting, a, hitting a jump shot from the foul line and scoring my 1,000th point and the, the, the crowd erupted. Um, and it was an exciting time. At class in 95, uh, the game against North Attleboro happened in November of 94, but that was actually the graduating class of 95. So in that year, class of 95, and Coach Burns, uh, who is currently one of the coaches and he's a teacher here, he actually was part of the uh, team. He was one of the star players. But that's one of the very few years that Attleboro beat North Attleboro in our, our annual Thanksgiving Day game. And that, that was also a, a, one of the first times in a really long time that we had beat North and we, it was quite a few years again before we beat North, but that was, again, my graduating class in 95. One, the one that kind of comes back to me uh, was 2008 um, Thanksgiving Day football game. Uh, it's been a long time that, since we had beaten uh, North Attleboro, and it was here. And um, we, um, we beat them in a very close game, and um, our community was, was so happy, you know. 
uh, people so excited and crying and, and, and it was like very emotional. And uh, so I, I do remember that. Um, coach DeShane's uh, first, uh, first victory over North Attleboro as a head coach. Uh, so that was a very, um, it was a, I think that as a community event, but also something that you know was, was, was huge for football at the time for us. So definitely one that I remember. High school is often a whirlwind, a flurry of academics, sports, and social interactions that pass many by in the moment. For these teachers, returning to AHS as an adult has allowed them to see their experiences through a new lens. First things that I remember like thinking about when I came back in was I remember walking into the B1 cafeteria and the smell hit me. A smell that I don't even notice now, that I couldn't pick out or identify. It just brought me right back and it was familiar and it was as if I hadn't left. You know, if, if the scoreboard goes out and the electrical panel in the gym doesn't host the, um, the switch for it, actually I know where it is, it used to be in the pool. Um, area, which is kind of awkward, but that's where it was. So sometimes if it went out, they would be they wasn't sure how to fix it, and I'd be able to go in and you know know what to do. Uh, so that's the ins and outs and like the the, the little parts of uh, of the building. Really, the pool area. I mean, I spent many hours in there. Um, I'm sad that we didn't get to swim the past three years because of the new building. Uh, we were supposed to. This was supposed to be our last season there, but a lot of memories where I learned how to swim there. I um, you know, got to swim with Liz Koch, who has most of the records that Zuri is now breaking. Um, and the fact that I get to coach someone break those records is, is pretty cool. One of the most kind of important things that's happened to me since I've been a teacher here is that um, just a few weeks before my grandmother died three years ago, she was able to come into the school one last time and she got to see my classroom. And I know that she was really proud to see that and kind of see how, you know, I was continuing, um, you know, this like service that my family has had for so many years. Um, and I know that it meant a lot to her and that memory means so much to me. Um, and I know that that's something I'll always remember and I'll bring into the new school. Demolition of 100 Rathbun Willard Drive has already begun. Its successor, Standing Tall, looked on from one Blue Pride way, representing all of the big and exciting opportunities and possibilities to come. I just think that the idea that so many people in this, in Attleboro as a community, um, have connections to this school and, um, like I said, feel like this is like a second home, like the students spend half of their day here, I spend half of my day here, and so I think that Carrying that into the new school is going to help the new school um, feel really comfortable, just like I feel this one does. I mean, I this this is my 20th year in this classroom, and uh, you know, I look forward to the 10 plus years in the new building. I think um, what we as teachers do in this building is still going to be the same. We're just going to have better tools, and I think um, it's just really going to benefit the kids. I mean, like, it's a bittersweet. Sad to see this place go, but it's not, the building didn't make the memories, it was the people, and that's what's important. What I hope that this the new high school is going to provide are opportunities that this building might not have been able to. And it, you, you don't get an education from the four walls of a building, you know, but the four walls can offer opportunities that you might not have otherwise been able to get. I'm just excited for how the community gets to interact with our school and our students because there's a lot of great for the community to see, you know, and I think being able to get more community members into the building and seeing that it was so worth it, like, thank you for being willing to pay more taxes. I moved back to Attleboro so that I could, my taxes could go towards the place that I work and, you know, it's going to be awesome. I am always impressed by what we're able to do in this building. We have some of the most compassionate, innovative, um, just interesting people on both uh, the side of the, you know, on both sides of the desk, the, the student and the teacher. And the notion that we can do what we do in this building year after year with the kind of budgetary constraints that we face, with the kind of social emotional issues that we deal with, with the, the, the needs of the city that we live in. We push rocks up hills every single day um, and every single year. And we do it with less than we should have available to us, and yet we do it. So I think to myself, when we are in a building that allows us to 
capitalize on all of our strengths and all of our creativity and all of our, our, our innovative thinking, then it's going to be exciting. This building might just seem an old, haggard structure to those who haven't spent time here teaching, mentoring, guiding, and nurturing the students who show up, work hard, and grow. Of course, for those of us who have, it means so much more. For me, it will always be based on the principles of Blue Pride. 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 Well, I'm excited to get a new building and excited to see this one knocked down. I mean, it's, it's a lot of where my roots come from and it'll always be with me. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of what I learned here. It is like my second home. Home, it's home. I just loved being in this building. It was, you know, um, it was home. Empowerment, you know, as a, an adult, um, I wish I could go back and, and say to that kid who walked down these same hallways or and went, sat in these same classes and say, you'll be stronger, you, you'll like who you are, um, you will grow to become empowered and find your voice. In one word, this building probably means growth to me. Everyone's there to support me if I need them. And, you know, it's, it's just another place I can call home. Historic. Lots of memories. Adventure. Passion. Opportunities. I'd say opportunity. There's a lot of different things to do around here. Friends. Inspirational. Important. This building is important because it's my first year of high school and it's my only year in this building. And I learned a lot of my high school tips and tricks here and I got a feel of high school here. So it's important.